Tartalia, also known as Child, might be the most powerful carry DPS character in Genshin Impact. He is quite complicated to master, but his kit and AoE damage output is absolutely insane and using him has allowed me to clear the entirety of the Abyss quite easily. That's just how powerful he is. He is easily as strong, if not stronger, than the Luke, Klee and Keqing as a main carry. Another point about Tartalia is that his scaling seems very exponential, so the higher the level and the better the gear, the more amazing he is. He might seem underwhelming at first, but once you min-max his stats and get him to a nice crit, crit damage ratio with a lot of hydro damage, he starts becoming an insane DPS machine. I do have to say that he is a lot more whale friendly than free to play friendly as his best weapon choices are locked behind some gacha or some sort of investment, though he can still do very well with some free to play options. Note that this guide is taking into account child as a main DPS. There are possible builds with more energy recharge and elemental mastery that would be using him more as an old spam slash vaporized secondary DPS that could also work very well, but would require more testing, though I do not think Child is really meant to be a support. In this guide, I will go over his abilities and explain how the whole Riptide effect works and how to manage his stand switching and cooldowns. I will also talk about his talents and constellations as well as his stat priority in order to make him an ultimate DPS beast. I will go over his weapon choices for both whales and free to play players as well as all the best artifact set possibilities. Lastly, I will give some important gameplay tips on how to efficiently use him and talk about the best team comps and other characters to combo with him for ultimate success. So when we're talking about child's abilities, his main strength is fast attacks as well as crazy burst and AoE damage. The way this character works is all based on him applying a debuff called Riptide on enemies, which will then cause debuff to trigger AoE damage in many ways. In range form, this applies only by doing aim shots. Subsequent aim shots will trigger Riptide Flash, which will do a few hydro damage hits in a quick succession for a lot of burst damage. Enemies who die with the Riptide effect on them will also explode for AoE Hydro Damage and apply Riptide to all other monsters around. The strategy in range form will be to full aim, aim shot at a monster and will do very well if you can snipe off weaker mobs in a pack one at a time as they will keep spreading Riptides and exploding. The damage is actually very impressive on these effects and makes waiting for the melee stance cooldown a lot less painful than people think. The actual scaling on the aim shot is actually pretty high. You will do really really high damage and if they have Riptide on them, the damage will be even better than most other characters who use aim shot. It is not to be underestimated and Child's aim shot archer stance should be used often because it actually does a lot more damage than people realize. His elemental skills turned Tartalia into a melee god and simply activating the ability does a nice burst AoE hydro damage. All attacks are still considered normal attacks but do purely hydro damage. Hitting enemies affected by Riptide with normal or charge attacks will cause an AoE hydro burst explosion damage that does very high damage. That damage is considered elemental skill damage and can only happen once every 1.5 seconds per monster. This basically means that when you are in melee hitting monsters with Riptide on them, every time you hit them you will do extra AoE damage on top of the damage of his normal attacks. This is why his damage is so amazing. It might look like smaller numbers but there are so many smaller numbers that it actually ends up being more damage than most other DPS characters. The big concern here is the cooldown which is not as bad as people think. If you are the one cancelling the skill, either by pressing E again or switching to another character, the cooldown will be anywhere between 6 and 36 seconds maximum. If you instead let this run out after 30 seconds, the cooldown will be up to 45 seconds. So it is very important to pay attention to this. There will be a flashing sword icon on top of your head once it's about to expire. Do not let this ability expire on its own. You have to be the one cancelling it if you do not want to have an extra 10 seconds of cooldown. If you cancel this skill quickly, you will have a lot lower of a cooldown. The minimum is 6 seconds. It is recommended not to stay in melee form 
too long and keep stands shuffling and alternate to other characters to keep triggering elemental combos, it seriously doesn't feel like cooldown on the E is a big deal once you get into a good flow. His elemental burst is one of the highest scaling ability in the game, even more so in melee form. In range form, it shoots an arrow similar to Venti that does huge damage to everything hit and applies Riptide to all monsters. It also returns 20 of the energy cost, which is basically 33%, and that is a very powerful ability not to be underestimated. In melee form, it will do a full 360 AoE damage and proc all Riptide effects for enemies hit, consuming them and doing even more damage. This is considered elemental burst damage and has gotten me crit between 100,000 and 200,000 at level 80, even without crazy buff. The ult is one of his main damage source and does AoE all around him, so it is absolutely amazing to clear entire rooms of the Abyss, especially when combined with characters that will suck in mobs into one area. His talents are pretty straightforward. Never ending extends the duration of Riptide by 8 seconds on monsters, which basically just helps you have the buff longer. And Sword of Torrents makes it so that critical hits in melee form apply a Riptide. This is why Critical Strike is important on him, because when you go in melee form and you start hitting monsters, you will apply Riptide on them straight away if you have a good crit chance. His passive ability is probably one of the best passive in the entire game, as it increases the talent level of normal attacks by one for every single party member. And this includes himself, where he gives himself plus one on his normal attack, which is actually very powerful. His constellations are absolutely amazing. The first and second one are some of the most important ones, and then if you're well, the fourth and sixth ones are game changing. The first constellation reduces the cooldown of his melee stance by 20%, which is obviously a very big buff to his biggest downside, which is the long cooldown on his E. Now, as much as this is a good buff, it is not required to play child. A C0 child will still perform amazingly. The second constellation gives him 4 energy every time he defeats a monster and is probably one of his most powerful because of that. This will let you spam his ult like crazy, especially in high mob density area like the Abyss. And his ult is so powerful that this is game changing. Constellation 4 is also a huge GPS increase. It allows to trigger extra Riptide effects on enemy and basically gives them a dot when they have Riptide on them. It just increases your DPS tremendously. His 6th constellation basically makes his melee stance have no cooldown at all and will make whales stupidly powerful when using this character. It will make him probably the top DPS character in the game when he has 6 constellation. For his stat priority, crit rate is obviously very important to have on him. You do not need to have 100% for it to work due to his insanely fast attack speed and the fact that his Riptide lasts for a long time on enemies. Around 40% seems to be very sufficient to have all enemies instantly affected by the debuff when you go in melee form. Hydro damage, crit damage, and attack will be the other priorities in terms of stats, while making sure to keep a good ratio of 1 crit rate for 2 crit damage. Energy recharge is also not a bad stat at all, since his ult is insanely powerful, especially when using 2-piece Noblesse Oblige or having some of the constellations. You will want to make sure to have attack on the sands, hydro damage on the goblet, and crit rate or crit damage on the circlet. Note that it is also possible for the sands to have something like energy recharge or elemental mastery in some builds, but it still requires a little bit more testing to be sure. For weapon choices, Skyward Harp is by far his best in slot, providing him crit rate, crit damage, and the passive that works both in melee and range form. Now the advantage that Skyward Harp has on top of other weapons such as Rust is that it boosts all of his abilities including his Riptide and his ult on top of all of his normal attacks and because it is a 5 star the base attack will get tremendously higher than any other 4 star weapons especially at level 80 or 90 and the fact that it provides crit rate means that you can itemize for more crit damage on your gear which will take his damage to even higher degrees. Now Rust might be his second best weapon due to the passive giving him normal attack damage which applies in range and in melee form. Sadly, it also reduces the aim shot damage which is actually a big part of child's kit as opposed to most other archers. Now it gives attack which is also a good stat for child, not as good as crit rate or crit damage but it still works well for him. Now the passive is obviously what's amazing about Rust by boosting his normal attacks 
Sadly, it doesn't boost the damage that his Riptide procs do and it doesn't help his ult at all. So while you might seem like you're going to do a lot more damage with a Rust, especially with refinement levels, you are also losing out on a lot of damage when you ult and every time your Riptide proc, you are losing out on a lot of damage. So as much as some people are going to say that Rust might be better than Skyward Harp, it looks better because your auto attacks do more damage, but your Riptides and your ult are going to be a lot weaker than Skyward Harp would provide. So I think they're pretty even. If you have a 5 refinement Rust, you might be slightly ahead, but Skyward Harp at level 80 or 90 will most likely still outperform Rust if you look at the numbers properly and you take into account the damage from Riptide. Amos Bow is probably after Rust because it is obviously another 5 star weapon with very high base damage damage which will scale better than any other stat in the game. The passive is also pretty good but obviously not as good as Rust so Amos Bow is probably the third best choice for this character. Now the Viridescent Hunt, the BP weapon, is another incredible option for him. The passive has seemed to be working in melee range and also it gives crit which obviously allows you to build for more crit damage on the gear and to unlock his full potential on applying Riptide. For players who are free to play, your best options will be the Royal Bow and the Black Cliff Bow, which can be bought in the Star Glitter Shop. They do provide crit chance, crit damage, and attack, which are all great stats on him, and will be good options if you do not have any of the options. For other options for free to play, Stringless is okay, but it doesn't apply to half of his damage, which is the melee attack. It only applies to Riptide effects, so it is doing okay of a job, but it is not amazing. Sacrificial Bow also does not work on his E cooldown, so that also is not a very good option. Sadly, if you're free to play and you don't have the option of buying the targeted weapons, there is really not other amazing options. Every option that will have attack will be okay, but it will never perform as well as the other options who are not free to play or from the targeter shop. Now for artifact choices, the best sets for him that I have found is going to be 2-piece Noblesse Oblige and 2-piece Gladiator. It boosts both his attack by 18%, and his ult damage by 20%. As I said earlier, his ult is one of the biggest source of damage that this character has, and until we get a water damage set, this is probably going to be the best option for him. The Wandering Troops is also another option that can be very good, but the 4-piece bonus would require only to be doing charge attacks, which, again, is okay on him, but it is not the main source of his damage, as his normal attack combo in melee is much more powerful. Nonetheless, it can still work well and do very good for you. 4-piece Gambler would also be an insanely powerful option because it actually kind of works with a skill cooldown, but the fact that it is not a 5-star item will make it so that you will lose a lot of DPS from not having 5-star items and will not be the best option because of that. There doesn't seem to be many other options for him until we have a new set that boosts Hydro Damage, as most items don't work well for him because he's a bow user, so 4-piece Gladiator doesn't work because of that. Martial Artist and Berserker would be great if they had 5 star version and you can use those until you get to the point where you can farm those 5 star items better. It is quite complicated and will require a lot of testing to figure out his best team comms and combos but Vaporize is going to be one of the main source of big burst damage so bringing a character such as Xiangling or Bennett is going to be very important. When you cast a Hydro ability on a monster that is affected by fire, your Hydro ability will do 200% damage Vaporize, so this is going to be the biggest source of damage nuke for Child. Electric supports such as Fischl are obviously very powerful with him as well, enhancing his already crazy AoE more with Electro Charge. If you have 6 Constellation Fischl, it is going to be the most broken combo and you will have to pair her with him. It is just insane. Sadly, Chongyun does not work well with him at all because it does not apply the Frozen effect since all of his damage is already Hydro. Now, animal support such as Venti and Sucrose will be S plus tier with him because they are able to gather mobs into a cluster and enable his maximum damage potential with him. So far in my testing, he's been an absolute beast at clearing the levels of the Abyss. He is better the more monsters there are so he is an absolute room clearer and is insane at also farming a lot of the artifact domains that have a lot of monsters. I hope that you guys enjoyed this guide and have some better information about how to play him. Of course we will keep learning and testing more and more and I will be live streaming playing this character for many days in the coming weeks so make sure to tune in and come ask me questions if you have some as well as watch my footage of me clearing the entire Abyss 12 with him and see how just amazing he is. Make sure to check out our channel on Not Casuals we have 
tons of different character guides, over 60 different Genshin Impact videos are available for you to watch, and we live stream every single day, and we love to answer your question and help you out. As always guys, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys on the next character guide.